Hi guys. So today I wanted to give you a good speech over animals. But first I'm gonna open up with a pretty ironic quote. Good dog good dragons under the control of bad people do bad things. This is a quote that was stated in the new how to train your dragons. The same thing can be said of dogs and more specifically pit bulls. Off. More specifically pit bulls. Now it's hard for people to tell fact from fiction, but the truth is that there's so much research done on dog attacks and dog bites and certain dog breeds and how to, pro how to provoke an attack and how to keep an attack from happening. But the misfortune is that people don't pay any attention to this information. Instead, they like to place the blame on the dog breed itself from the dog that their attack happened from and more specifically a pit bull. Now, pit bulls can come in many different shapes, sizes, and breeds. They're not a naturally happening dog with German Shepherds. They were bred from different mixes and pedigrees. But some of the more known bre breeds of Pitbull are the American Bully, the American Staffordshire Terrier, the American Pitbull Terrier, and the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Now, the American Bully is the most common Pitbull we see around. It's the red nose, the blue nose, and all American Pitbulls, you might think. But when you look at these dogs, you don't see aggression. You see smiling faces and their big heads and their big little bodies. They don't look so scary. So today I want to go over the history of the pit bull and where the image of them changed, what the benefits they are that offer to our society, and why we can't ban the pit bull. Now, the history of the pit bull. According to lovable.org, in World War I, pit bulls served at man's side during wartime. They were seen as a brave, loyal, and great service dog to men. They were soon viewed as the nation's mascot before Hill Sam came around. Now, there also became America's sweetheart during the 1920s. One of the most famous pit bulls in pop culture history may be Petey, the adorable dog we saw in the War Rascals. So, how can you look at a dog like that that's so loved and respected and seen as amazing and it becomes so feared and disliked? Well, after dog fighting was outlawed in the United States, people began to seek out pit bulls for illicit purposes. They are soon viewed as money-making commodities instead of family companions. People soon associated pit bulls with urban poverty, urban thugs, crime, and poverty because of the way that these dogs were treated. Now, pit bulls may have been bred to fight, but it's not a natural aggression that they had occurred with. It's something that people forced onto them. But other than that, pit bulls were always such a great and loving dog, and they, even kids loved them. Now that we've seen the history of the pit bull and where the image of them changed, Let's look at the services that they offer to our society. Now, people might say that pit bulls are aggressive and getting too close to one, they're gonna start growling at you and they're gonna bite you and they're dangerous. And there's been recorded attacks and even deaths because of the pit bull. But the truth is people either provoke those attacks or they were not fully educated on how to act around the dog in general. Now, according to, to times.com, in Sioux City, Iowa, in 2008, they placed a pit bull ban to help bring down the statistics of recorded dog attacks and bites. But the truth is that even after that ban occurred, dog bites still stayed about the same, even rising slightly. So we have to wonder, what are the positive benefits that a pit bull can bring to our society? Well, pit bulls can help with tracking down missing kids and lost dementia patients. They're also seen as diabetic watchdogs, seizure alert dogs, and many other plethora of services. They even help kids with Down syndrome or autism read books because kids would much rather read to a dog than they would rather read to a human. So now that we've seen what pit bulls offer to our society, let's look at why I think we can't ban the pit bull. Now knowing from personal experience and the ownership of a pit bull, I know how loving and sweet a pit bull can be. I also know the aggression that they can have. But it has been scientifically proven that dogs such as Doberman Pinschermans, the Rottweiler, and even the German Shepherd are all naturally more aggressive than a pit bull would be. But the problem is, is why would we ban a pit bull because of their aggression, but not the other breeds of dogs that are more aggressive and more likely to attack you than a pit bull would? That's the problem with society, is we, we're very biased. And I personally believe that if we're going to have that bias towards pit bulls, we should have it towards all dogs. Because if humans have equality rights, so should animals. But if it's statistically proven that pit bulls aren't as aggressive, what's the problem with them? It's just people's opinions. So now to do a recap.
I hope that I've helped you to learn the history of pit bulls, the history of pit bulls, the services and the positive benefits they offer our society, and overall why we can't discriminate against breeds. Because good dogs under the control of good people do great, good things. Good dogs under the control of bad people do bad things. But good dogs under the control of good people do great things. And when it comes to owning a dog, you can't ban love and you can't ban happiness.